Hello, and welcome to this webinar, Revolution APQP, introducing a new solution that will change your workplace, brought to you by HiQA. I am Lisa Sterling, your host and moderator for today's session. Before we get started, I would like to mention a couple of housekeeping items. We invite you to ask questions throughout the presentation by typing in your Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, as your phone is muted during the session. We will address the questions received at the end of the presentation. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available in a few days. I would now like to introduce you to our presenters. First, we will have Sam Golan, founder and CEO of HiQA, followed by Chris Mendocino, Vice President of Product for HiQA. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Sam. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you all for taking the time today, uh, participating High QA PQP Production Quality Planning Webinar. As a quality 4.0 leader, our mission statement is constantly and continuously creating and shaping the next generation of uh, the quality manufacturing. We are excited to share with you today a solution for one of the most challenging or painful, if you will, requirement from supply chain, the APQP, or in high QA terminology, the PQP, production quality planning. Why we use a little bit of a different acronym, very simple. High QA PQP enables much more into the quality process productivity known as the PQP uh, today. So, High QA is a quality or manufacturing quality management system, the MQMS, and High QA enables companies at any size from job shop up to enterprises to automate and integrate that entire quality management manufacturing uh, and usually also manage supply chain. Um, High QA founded uh, about 14 years ago and located uh, in New Jersey, the headquarter. High QA consists of three solution layers, enable internal quality process, supply chain management, where PQP, one of the three solution layer, to serve internal requirement, as well as the PQP service as a communication platform with supply chain. High QA professional team supports customers as small as job shop, and from four hours training to start being highly productive. And as well as, of course, large enterprises where we provide professional services, starting from process flow analysis through comprehensive onboarding, including integration with third party software as ERP, PLM, via the HiQA uh, Open API. Here is a short list of high QA 700 plus customers. And what you can see here actually represents all industries, aerospace, defense, automotive, medical, oil and gas, and more. Making parts is making parts, no matter what industry you're gonna serve or you are serving today. But what really makes the difference is the way you handle regulation, documentation, forms, reports, processes, and much more. And with high QA, PQP, this will really make the difference and will make it seamlessly. And let's talk a little bit about APQP. APQP is a challenging process. We know it's born in the automotive industry as an AIAG standard and already started adoption in other industries as medical and aerospace. But I will emphasize here a couple of uh, words or sentences, as you can see. In red line, we will call the advanced product quality planning and control and reduce the complexity of product quality planning of customers and suppliers and allowing customers to easily communicate their product quality planning requirement to their suppliers. Supplier again, understanding of the basic industry. So those red lines 
I will ask, is it really reducing the complexity as we know APQP today? Is it easily communicate with uh, supply chain? And what is the basic industry understanding? So question mark. Then it will continue. Control plan summarize the identify the process and product parameters required. And of course you can read it, but then we go to the second part. Now the standard across many manufacturing sectors, APQP defines the required input and output of each such stage to the product development processes. So don't get me wrong. The APQP is definitely a must as part of the manufacturing industry growth by OEM and many new innovation that coming to this manufacturing industry. No doubt, the manufacturing industry is growing and growing fast. But with that, we know parts are getting smaller, having tighter tolerance, detailed requirement of quality is on the go of every day, a lot of engineering changes, traceability requirement, uh, frequency regulation change and newly added with endless documentation and the list of course is long. So where and how all this requirement addresses today and how it will be addressed in the future, this requirement will not be reduced. It will grow and will even grow dramatically. So talking about standard, if you remember from the previous slide, now look into the process flow standard as part of the APQP. I'm not sure that I see here any standard. If you are taking to the next slide and we can talk about control plan standard and you can see really how standard apply, right? And we can look at PFMEA, the process flow, failure analysis. We can do an FMEA and we can go into PPAP. That is a huge requirement that everybody face almost on a daily basis. And, and, and we can go on and on looking and searching from a standard. And actually it boils down into not a surprise. The common standard actually is Excel. But the outcome is a standard? This is the question. Well, the outcome is not a standard. As you see, many, many type of forms and processes. And the question will be, how are we going to handle a massive, a massive increase of APQP requirements? Now, when we look into the uh, APQP challenges today, okay? We can agree that the current APQP challenges resolved by Microsoft Excel. 90% are using the APQP with Excel. And I'm saying 90% and I'm pretty conservative. Excel is an amazing tool, but it is not an application. It is not database driven and it is not really integrated with quality processes. It requires pretty intensive labor, creating, updating, copy, paste, etc. One of our customers shared with me that he has about 70 plus tabs in Excel for APQP he made. And you know what? He should be proud getting up to 70 plus tabs with tons of macros he developed. But and then I asked him two questions. So what do you do when engineering changes comes and you need to update your current Excel and how you're gonna make those changes and making sure that is Excel with the tons of macro are going to have the same outcome that you plan to do? You probably know the answer. And the second question was about traceability and or revision management as of course, you need to manage and, and, and when you manage level of Excel, 
you manage it on the on the on the Excel file level, like checking checkout when you do with the PLM system. But this is not the issue. The issue is how you manage the engineering changes within the content. Every tab in the Excel is a data. So going back to the APQP standard, the requirements are clear and making a lot of sense. But the solution until now, I'm not sure. And if you are talking about the APQP or the PQP by HiQA, so here is what coming when Chris will take the presentation rights. The APQP of IQA is an application. It is not an Excel-based or Excel on steroids. The HiQA PQP is an integrated solution with inspection manager when quality process start from a 2D or 3D all the way to package submission and everything in between, of course, including the PQP. The HiQA PQP out of the box consists of all AIAG form with rich library of reports, forum, dynamic and configurable workflow, SLA, automated alerts, and many other great features. And how all of this done, when we talk about quality management system, this is all in one integrated quality. It starts on the upper left side with 2D or 3D, which we call the downstream preparation. Then it goes to assignment and shop floor or inspection data collection. And then comes the reporting. And all of it is integrated database driven in one solution. To give you another angle of what is really quality management system, database driven, here it is and a quick view. HiQA is a centralized database having the layer of API where we can integrate with third-party solution. You have administration tool to manage user and access control in large organization. Then come the data source, 2D or 3D model. Then come the layer of the APQP. It is no longer an Excel outside of the process. It is an integrated solution. And then come the layer of the entire functionality the assignment for internal or external supply chain. And then comes the automated data collection, reporting, et cetera. And with this short opening, just to kind of frame the session today, I would like to transfer uh, this presentation rights to Chris, who will take us to the real high QA PQP presentation. And thank you again for taking the time. Chris? Yep, uh, thank you, Sam. Okay, sharing my screen. Let's go here. Okay, just confirm you can see the screen there. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, what we wanted to do today is just take everyone through uh, so a quick example of how this would work in our system. And so uh, as Sam had brought up, most companies that we've talked to have some form of um, ABQP requirements or way of handling uh, their customers' submission requirements, and they utilize Excel spreadsheets. So you'll have uh, most of you on the call probably have some sort of uh, very large Excel spreadsheet with many tabs that need to get filled in for each job that you're running. Okay, and so I want to emphasize that just so that um, we can use that as a reference point when we're looking at this system here. So uh, many of you may already be familiar with HiQA and Inspection Manager. For those that aren't, just real briefly, so you know what you're looking at here. Um, we are inside of a part and job record, okay? A specific job instance of a part. Uh, everything that we do originates from a drawing, okay? 
uh, we import drawings or well, drawings or 3D models and uh, create an inspection plan from uh, those records. Okay, and we do that through auto ballooning uh, and 3D PMI recognition, depending on what your starting point is. Now, from there, uh, this is these are things that customers do every day with our product. Now, uh, they will uh, take dimensions. So visually from the drawing, they'll break those dimensions up into specific operations at which they're going to be inspected. Okay, and at each one of those operations, they then take uh, those features and build a unique and contextualized inspection plan for that operation. Okay, so you have a unique balloon drawing, you have uh, unique requirements at that stage of the process, all your um, gauge categories, sampling rules, designators are all assigned here at this stage. Uh, and you can assign things like the, if we go over here, the uh, target CPK, PPK values, uh, if you're doing SBC analysis and so on. So this is really the core tool that allows you to establish all of the inspection requirements uh, and, and develop your plan from the inspection perspective. Okay, uh, from here, then this, so if this is what we've been doing with Inspection Manager for many years, um, going forward here, we're now taking on the uh, more submission requirements planning uh, and managing all of that within the system as well. So you'll see up here, this PQP records tab that we have. So as we set up our inspection requirements, we now also want to set up our uh, submission requirements that we have, okay? So when I come into my PQP records, I first need to pull in what we call an index. So a couple of things to think about here when we're looking at a system like this. Um, the, if we look back to the Excel spreadsheet with the many tabs that you would have, uh, each one of those tabs represents a submission requirement uh, that you need to present to your customer at some stage of any given project. So some items uh, get submitted with the first article or with your capability study, uh, and then other items might get submitted at the end of the process. Uh, like a lot inspection report or kind of like a final submission package, right? And so all of those requirements need to be managed somehow in a uh, portfolio of sorts, right? And so we refer to that tracking tool as an index here. So uh, what we're doing is we're bringing in an index template. So I may have a whole variety of templates depending on the part type, uh, depending on my unique customer requirements, uh, et cetera, okay? So there could be a whole uh, variety of reasons why I have different index templates. And so even here out of the box, what we're looking at is a standard new part PPAP index versus a standard repeat part PPAP index. So the first time that I run a job, I'll have many uh, submission requirements uh, such as maybe I have to run gauge r and I have to do a full P, uh, P flow FMEA control plan uh, and a capability study and so on. Maybe I have to do all that for my first, uh, the first time I run a new part, but maybe the subsequent times I don't have to uh, do a full gauge r and over again. I can utilize the same gauging equipment and such. Okay, so this is all able to be uh, customized and templatized for your specific needs customer submission requirements and so on. So let's walk through an example of it though. Uh, so I'm gonna pull in this one uh, standard index template that we have and we get something kind of like this, okay? So this is effectively just a checklist, okay? Of all of our submission requirements, just like we talked about. So the design record being the balloon drawing, the symbol here is representing the uh, document type. So this would be like an attachment coming from the system. Uh, this is a static report currently. This is an application form, the control plan. Some of these are dynamic reports. So different types of reports that need to be generated for any of the given requirements. Uh, we have the submission level that gets pulled in. So for the new part uh, template that we had, um, all of these items are set to submit. And we just said 
maybe gauge r and r isn't required for submission to the customer maybe the customer just requires you to um, have it on record in case it's requested okay so uh, different levels that you can kind of set for all that as part of the template that you're bringing in okay so uh, once we bring this in, we can start uh, filling it out and populating it. So let's just go back and take a look real quick at some of those items, because one of them was the balloon drawing. And so if you've worked with the system before, you're familiar with this idea of I can just one click create my ballooned PDF. We have that document here like so. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, materials that need to be tracked and established as well. And so in my materials and process library, uh, I may have s specific materials like um, uh, aluminum and we'll put like a material code, whatever, A123. Maybe it has a spec number, uh, spec 123, et cetera. So I might plan for um, some specific uh, materials or special processes that are needed for this part and job. Okay, uh, we have template libraries for these as well, so that you can pull those in from templates uh, if needed. So the reason I wanted to set that up is when we're at the PQP records area, I wanted to show you how this is all tied in together. When we're here and we just click sync, that now is going to bring in my balloon drawing, gets attached to my design record, and I get a new line item for each material or special process that was uh, built as a requirement here as part of my part record, okay? So one, this is now at a draft stage. It's ready to be uh, reviewed or submitted for review uh, through the workflows that we have built into the system, okay? And I also have this uh, material object here. So if I click on this app form, uh, I can pull that up. I can see the code, the specific requirements. All of these fields here are able to be customized to your needs. So the question is, what do you need to track about your material um, uh, material certificates and the supplier that you're getting them from, the specifications and so on? Uh, we can add any sort of um, fields here uh, per your needs to populate your material certificate forms. Okay. So there's a lot of flexibility in the system for things like that. Uh, but the key here is that I've got a form that is requiring a file to be uploaded against it. So the material cert coming from my supplier. All right, so I can come in here and just upload that material cert. This can be made accessible or assigned to the personnel in receiving, okay? So that as they receive the material, they can have a personal task list. So let's take a look at that for a second. So they can have a personal task list of everything assigned to them all of the documents, all the forms, submission requirements that they are responsible for uh, populating, driven by due dates, you have statuses on all of the individual items, and then the part and job that they're associated with. Okay, so whether you're in receiving inspection, you're on the shop floor, you're in quality process manufacturing, wherever you are within the organization, you may have specific documents that are assigned to you at unique stages of the workflow for each of those documents, okay? So all of that rolls up into these personal task lists so people can keep track of what they are responsible for on what timelines, okay? So let's go back to our index here and look at some of the other requirements. So uh, for example, let's look at our P flow that we have here. That might be one of the first ones that I have to set up. So I'm going to click here to start generating that. We have a few different app forms uh, here. These are spe these are highly specialized apps that are part of the APQP process, right? So we have the PFLOW FMEA control plan here. I'm going to start off with this PFLOW, uh, some basic parameters. I can change the title and such if I want to. We'll just leave it as default for now. I can assign specific workflows or leave that as default. I can assign roles and responsibilities for stages within the workflow or leave that as default. These can all be templated per your business requirements. Okay, so we're not having to think too much about the individual selections here. Okay, now when I pull that in, a couple of things happen. Okay, this starts to generate my PFLOW diagram. 
okay? And it starts to pull in the content. It pulled in those three operations that I had defined earlier in the part. So from the drawing, defined operations, all that information gets leveraged forward into my subsequent documentation, okay? Now, uh, in this particular setup, I don't have the content here, but you can also templatize the, the content in these forms per each operation, okay? So just throwing that out there. Um, I'm gonna add some processes here because turning, milling, finish, that's probably not the only things that I'm doing, right? For the entire routing. So the PFLOW probably requires some other processes that aren't manufacturing related, but I may wanna order and receive material. Uh, these are coming from a process library that you would establish in the system for your specific processes or operations that occur within your business environment. Okay, so order material receive, maybe we'll do final packaging here and we'll ship parts, okay? Uh, so I'll just add those in and then I can arrange them uh, however I need to in order to get the proper sequencing here, okay? So I order my material, receive, turning, milling, finish, final packaging, ship parts, okay? Uh, and I can add in uh, whatever sort of um, steps here that need to be done, maybe final packaging, we'll say inspection and so on, right? Uh, so I can kind of inter uh, engage with this in order to set it all up the way that I need, all right? Now, well, yeah, we'll, we'll save that for a second. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the index here. Okay, so from the PFLOW, um, let me make sure I saved that real quick. Yep, I saved it. Okay. Uh, so from the PFLOW, let's go to the FMEA here. That would be the next document we want to create. So from the FMEA, notice the PFLOW we're going, uh, we're basing it off of, and we have our workflow selections and so on, like we did before. I'm just going next, 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 unless I specify something specific there. Okay. Uh, so and this is our FMEA that gets pulled in. So a few things to notice here. Um, the automation that's getting applied is based on that process uh, and operations library. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but look at the amount of content that's actually being brought into this automatically. So this isn't just because it's a demo. This is what can happen in your environment as well uh, when you set up the, the system and configure it per your needs. Uh, so what happened here is it synced everything over from the PFLOW. So we had operations 10, 15, 20, et cetera. There was order material, receive material, turning, uh, milling, final packaging, ship parts, right? Okay. So what happened is when those operations get pulled into the FMEA, it pulls in all of the templated potential failure modes, potential effects of failure, all of this content gets pulled in per operation, okay? So that is the idea here. Um, let me show you in that library. Now, this can be edited, you know, if needed, right? I can go and edit any of these fields for the specific job, but it's all getting pulled in from templated content. All right, so let me show you what that looks like real briefly uh, so that this makes sense. If we go up to our manufacturing tab, we're now kind of in the system configuration side of the product, okay? And so I'm gonna to go to my process library here. So this is the complete list of all of my processes and operations that I might um, have within my uh, manufacturing environment, okay? So each one has a unique ID, okay? Each, uh, we have the names of each one of them, the process type here, this is feeding into the PFLOW like we discussed. Uh, and we can even add tags for searchability and convenience. Uh, and there is some automation that can be applied as far as associating um, different types of processes uh, for different tasks. Okay, now down here, as I look at each one, uh, I can see kind of the details about it here. And I can see the, here, let's look at the casting. Uh, so this is the templated FMEA content for the casting operation. I can have uh, my failure modes and effects here. Uh, this is what's getting pulled in uh, here. So if I've got drilling, uh, I don't think I had one for finish, but milling here has a few uh, that are laid out like so. 
Okay, so this is something where we can work with you to help you build this content or at least guide you on it and train you. Um, if, you've, if you're working with FMEAs, you have some sort of concept of this already, right? So uh, basically every company that we've talked to has this somewhere in like an Excel spreadsheet where they copy and paste the content into each of their respective forms. We're just doing it at a much more automated level uh, like that. Okay, so that's the process library where all this is coming from. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. Uh, let's see, component templates. So if that was our process library, this is what we call our component library. Okay, so uh, everything that I was pulling in to the PQP tab there, uh, we started off with an index, right? So we have index templates. Those are our checklists of all of our submission requirements, right? Uh, so these items, uh, if you're familiar with Inspection Manager and you've been working with it for some time, or maybe you haven't, uh, but we've been, we've had a report designer for many years uh, where customers can kind of build their own reports. We can help and build them for you. Um, and so, that service is basically getting expanded into all of these other components where we have a designer for index templates. We have a designer for workflows. We have a designer for um, static reports, dynamic reports, uh, the app forms even. So the PFLOW FMEA control plan, there's a designer to be able to customize those mini applications inside the product. Okay, and so when you start looking at this would be kind of your complete system library of all of the different templates that you've aggregated for your business. Okay, so uh, these can also be grouped and compiled per maybe you have different departments in your organization or different locations and uh, such that have different workflows or different report reporting requirements and so on. Um, maybe you um, and you definitely have different requirements coming from different customers. So these can be grouped, um, all of these, you can create folders, edit, move up and down. Uh, you can import, export and share data. Um, all of this content is able to be arranged however you would like to arrange it and organize it, okay? And we can even create what we refer to as packages. So let's say you have part families where there's, um, for a particular, for die cast parts or for injection molding parts, uh, right? So for the, that particular classification of part, you may have specific indexes that apply to them. Uh, you may have specific workflows, specific report forms. All those can be rolled up into packages uh, for different um, categories and subcategories of part families. Okay, so this entire package containing the index containing the reports, containing the workflows and everything all built into one package can be templatized and pulled into parts as needed. So all of that to say, and I understand that's a little bit to grasp um, when, when we do presentations and demos of this, uh, but all of this is for the purpose of when I come into my uh, PQP records tab to start planning and setting things up, I wanna establish all of my reports, all of my requirements and get them moving forward with as few clicks as possible, okay? So when I talk about building those templates of the packaged contents, uh, you saw how when I click on any one of these, right? Uh, I had to select the report template, the workflow, the user roles, et cetera. All of that even could be templated uh, for those packages to be able to drop everything in. So let me show you an example of another part that I already did that with. Uh, let's see here, the completed part. We'll pull that up. So this is just a copy of it, but I brought it a little farther through the process. Uh, so this one has the reports populated in it already, okay? And so Think about it that way, that instead of just bringing in the blank checklist, you could have brought it in with all of the reports already defined with their parameters already set. If you're doing a repeat part, or if you have a part that's very similar to another one, you can bring all of that content in 
And when the P flow hits, when the uh, PFMEA hits, when the control plan hits, uh, it's going to sync the content from the current part that you're in. Okay, just with the same general parameters, but it contextualizes it to whatever operations you defined in the part, whatever dimensional characteristics that need to be inspected, and so on. Okay, so let's take a look at some other um, reports. That, well, actually, real quick before we do that, let's go back to the FMEA for a second. Uh, so now looking at the FMEA, knowing that all that content got pulled in, uh, some other aspects of this that I want to show you as far as how the apps work. Now, uh, there's in every single one of these apps, forms, reports, uh, you will see there's the view area where we can review it. There's workflows associated with these. So you can see these are visual workflows. Uh, so they have statuses associated with them. They have roles and responsibilities for who can access it and modify the record at any given stage, right? And they have next steps. So this at this step, this one's in dark blue. That's where we're currently at. We also see that up here at the top that we're in a draft status. I can submit this if I am uh, responsible for this step. I can submit it to uh, the QC manager for review. And the QC manager can either approve or reject it. Okay. Now, um, this is just an example of a very simple workflow. These are able to be configured to your business logic. It's something that we consult with you on and build these for you uh, after um, some process mapping sessions where we kind of plan out uh, and, and uh, sketch out how your particular business operates. Okay. Uh, with workflows, that's driving all of the uh, task assignments. So this particular um, uh, application or report will show up in the in the my tasks queue for the QC inspector at the draft stage and then it's going to once he submits it it shows up in the my task queue for the QC manager okay so we talked about that before we have a my task queue here so i see everything assigned to me the workflows are driving what is assigned to me as a user okay and so one document can be assigned to multiple people depending on the stage that it's in Okay, uh, so with that, we have an entire workflow history for every single document. So you can see the entire history of changes to statuses, due dates, or timestamps, and um, the user who made the change. Uh, we also have a history. I'll show you that in another form. This one's empty. Uh, and we have revision management, right? So you can create document revisions, and you'll have a whole revision history of who revised it, when, and what was the reason for the revision change. Uh, and we also have electronic signatures for signing documents so that you can truly be a paperless company uh, when it comes to all of your uh, quality documentation. Okay, so uh, let me show you that email log here because that's actually pretty neat. Um, so any of these documents here, um, they can, uh, if we click right here, uh, I can send any of these directly via email. Okay, so I can just open that right up and you know, we'll just click it and uh, we'll actually show you the menu that pops up. So if I have that report and I need to submit it to my customer, I just say who it's going to, uh, maybe some CCs, I can add text here, I can upload additional documents if needed. Ideally, all of my documents are in this particular task list already, okay? And my customer will be able to open up that PDF report uh, on their side through their email. Now, anytime that anybody sends one of these documents via an email, if it's been sent once or a dozen times, an icon will show up right here, a little email icon saying that this was submitted. And so you can click on it to see the history, the submission history of any individual record in here. Okay, so full traceability to know exactly who's sending what. You don't have to try to remember, uh, did I send that or not? Look through your inbox. It's all uh, tracked and traced right here in the system. And then we also have uh, the full history for the entire index is rolled up here. So the history of um, any email that was submitted for any item in the entire index is rolled up into one kind of history queue here. Okay, so 
really cool. Um, huge amount of traceability and also automation being able to assign to different users and uh, drive accountability and um, progress that way. So uh, a couple other things to mention on this, and then we're going to start to open this up for Q&A. So uh, as I get through all of my reporting here, um, one more thing that, I'll <laughs> that we'll show, and then we'll talk about packaging. So um, uh, one of the other report styles that I want to show you here, uh, because we have many different types of reports, uh, some of them, like the SBC reports, are uh, pulling inspection data from our huge variety of data collection tools. So whether it's automated CMM uh, uh, data collection, or if you're using our shop floor applications for manual inspections in process and final inspection, receiving inspection, anything, uh, we can roll up that inspection data into SBC reports, into lot inspection reports, first articles, et cetera. Uh, and we can deal with uh, like gauge r and r style reports for doing your um, capability studies on the gauges. Uh, and then this is an entirely different type of report. This is something quite new that we're getting into. So these other things people have been doing, our customers have been doing for years at this point. Uh, but this one is a bit new for us because we realized that there's many reports that our customers work with and they have to fill out but they do it outside of the system because it's not really data driven. Um, it, it is to an extent, but let's open this up and take a look. So something like a part submission warrant, uh, this is just check boxes, right? Check boxes, text fields that I can type into. Uh, so we created a new type of kind of what we call a dynamic uh, form where anything yellow, you can type into, you can make it a drop down menu, you can make it a checkbox, you can do really anything you want with this so that now you're able to truly adopt all of the variety of different types of reports and forms that you would have uh, in your facility for quality related, right? Uh, and you're able to manage them in one system, okay? So you don't have to just have your SBC reports and your lot inspection reports in high QA, but then you go out to Excel for some other stuff that's a bit more specialized, right? You don't have to do that anymore. You can work with, um, we can work with you, you can work with us to um, design these reports based on your needs. So you can show us examples. These are about as configurable as uh, an HTML web page. That's, that's the degree of flexibility that we have with these. It's, it's almost that flexible. Uh, so there's a lot of control to be able to lay these out however you would like to see them. Uh, and that's a super cool advancement uh, with this new PQP product. Um, okay, so let's kind of wrap this up with one final concept that I want to hit on, but I don't think we have time to necessarily demonstrate it. Uh, as you work through your projects and your finalizing all of these documents, you see they're all in a draft state as they move through approval processes and signatures, um, they will eventually be marked as complete. Our progress icons will move towards 100%, right? And they will be checked as complete, okay? Uh, and we can move towards building our final package, okay? So when we build a final package, like I said, I don't think we have time for it just now, um, but we can definitely show this if to anybody who's interested in it in a one-on-one -on -one demo. We're happy to go through this. Uh, but building a final package takes everything marked as submit and rolls it up into one aggregated PDF document that you're able to then submit to your customer. So rather than doing what I did here, where I'm sending one isolated FAI report, uh, I can select here uh, and make a bundle of the FAI report with the material certs. Okay, so I can create a, a an ad hoc package to be sent to my customer for submission, uh, for approval to run production or what have you. So those would be kind of ad hoc packages that I send throughout the process. But then at the end, I can just, without even selecting things, uh, just build the final package that rolls up everything into one completed document. And that in and of itself is able to be tracked uh, and has roles and assignments associated with it um, and traceability of the history of when it was submitted, who it was submitted to and by, and so on and so forth. Okay. 
So that is kind of the full picture of what's going on if you're looking at it from a high level overview. Uh, obviously, there's lots of details to get into because some of these reports are extremely specialized and um, there, there's lots of little uh, details to kind of work out about how you would truly implement this in a facility. But hopefully that gives you enough of an overview where um, it's making you think about how can you implement a system like this and how it would work in your particular environment. So, uh, and with that, I think we're going to open it up to Q&A. And I think Lisa is moderating that for us. Perfect, thank you so much, Chris, and also to Sam for sharing your expertise. Again, just a reminder, you can type in your questions at the bottom of the screen in the Q&A tab. And we did have a couple of questions come in, so let's dive right in. The first question says, what is the cost of the PQP application? And we'll give that one to Sam. Yep. <laughs> can you hear me? Um, yes, okay. I can. Um, well, first of all, it's a module that goes on top of IM. And the cost is really depends on the scope of the um, APQP because it requires, before we go and implement it, what we call process flow analysis to really understand the requirement, how the process will flow. And 80% uh, of the cases, and even not 90% of the cases, whatever consists of today with the APQP or the PQP has already out of the box. So we need to do this, uh, I call it gap analysis and work with the customer or the prospect at that case to really quantify the requirement about how many users going to work on it, what is the flow, and it's going to be one-on-one -on -one in, many, in, in many cases. Okay, makes sense. Here's another question that's sort of related. Can we purchase PQP only? <laughs> no, because it is integrated solution, and the whole idea of PQP, it's, as I mentioned in my uh, couple of slides, that it's an integrated with a complete quality management system. So it's a module on top of inspection manager. Uh, so you can purchase it as a module if you have already, already inspection manager, but if you have, you don't have inspection manager, then you purchase inspection manager and then this PQP can be added as a module. Okay, great. Here is another question. Is the electronic signature module 21 CFR part 11 compliant? As far as I know, it is. Um, and maybe Chris or Effie will uh, confirm it. I think it is. I, I, I would need to double check on it. Okay. I don't know for we'll sure. We'll double check way. on it. Okay. Okay. Here's another question Is there a purchase order review process in the software? Yes, it is. And yeah. now we call it purchase. Oh, oh, Chris can explore more, but definitely, yes. Sure. Yeah. So um, that actually gets, it, it touches on the supply chain concept a exactly. bit. Uh, so it's not really the focus of this particular webinar, but um, if you think about the workflows that we have in the system and how you're able to pass responsibility of a document from one user to another, through the workflows as we discussed. Um, you can use that in the context of purchase orders to actually submit um, purchase orders down to your suppliers if they have inspection manager and also for them to submit data back up. Uh, and so you can actually work between inspection manager systems uh, in order to do that. If you're not uh, interfacing with customers or suppliers that also have inspection manager, then you could still use POs in the system uh, just to um, keep track of the POs and uh, all of the requirements that go along with them and move them through different workflow statuses. Maybe another sentence, as I mentioned in my slides, that PQP, it serves for internal, as uh, that's the topic of the webinar today, but I also mentioned this is the platform for communicating with suppliers. And so as Chris mentioned, you can create an established, not just 
uh, communication with suppliers via the workflow. They become part of the workflow, but you can create also standard communication with supplier by uploading your forms. So they're going to fill it up. And then there is no more, as you remember, with multiple slides that I call it standard, but it's not really standard. So not everybody, not every supplier will send you different forms, different colors, different columns. It's all going to talk the same language or actually your language. Yep. Excellent. Here is the next one. Would it be possible to have a demo to be temporarily tested? It's not a demo. Uh, it's a, it's a, a even not a, even not a trial. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a pilot. So Usually when we talk about large organization and we work with many large organization, we establish a pilot because we need again to talk about what this pilot will include, what the processes will be. So it's again, it's going to some even basic process flow analysis, what we would like to accomplish in this pilot. But the answer is definitely yes. Yeah, and we are doing that with several uh... Yeah, this kind of ties in with another question down below. Uh, somebody else had asked, when is it available? Yes. Uh, so there are uh, a number of companies that we're working with right now that are in that uh, piloting stage. And so we're open to bringing on additional companies uh, for that at this point and uh, with formal release uh, later this month. Okay, great. Here is the next one. Jeff is asking, how does it handle drawing slash model revisions? We have a revision control. So when you bring in uh, a new revision of a 2D print, the system has what we call automated comparison function that compare between two type of two drawings and actually communicate with the users on what changes we found on the print and apply the changes based on the user acceptance. When we talk about 3D, 3D is a different story. I don't want to get into it. We have a specific, I think, webinar sometimes in mid-April, Lisa, I don't remember. Um, mm -hmm. There is MBD, but yes, MBD is a different working. story. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new challenge in the industry, but we understand MBD very well. Um, so in MBD, what we do, we get the MBD and we modify it on the, on the MBD sites when you import any native file to high QA. And then once you do it, we convert it to an 2D and then you can apply all those processes. And in this stage, we do the same as we do with the 2D, do comparison between uh, 2D print. So it's a very practical process, if you will. So when we deal with 3D model, you have to be practical because we don't have fully annotated model. We have a lot of missing information. So we handle it that in that stage, but that's another webinar we're gonna have, I think mid April. Yes, think that, was, that uh, webinar is actually on April 13th and is being oh, hosted oh. by Modern Machine Shop. So right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so part two from Jeff says, is there an interface with the CMM to inspect the parts? Absolutely, yes. Uh, any CMM or VMM or R machine, any inspection tool on the globe we are talking to. Uh, we have a very rich library of presets. And when presets install in your network, then all this information gets automatically to the system with no user interference or save as in X folder or Y folder. So it's done completely automated. Okay, and Tim is asking, does Inspection Manager have the ability to integrate with ERP systems, Epicor specifically? Absolutely, yes. And we are already uh, integrated with a couple of ERP systems. As, as we speak, we are now in the midst of a project uh, with large um, medical company uh, headquarters in France. When we are integrating not just with SAP, uh, as well as with PLM system, uh, we integrated uh, also with uh, Oracle, Agile, and probably many others. Yeah, there's um, the, that particular use, uh, attendee had asked about Epicor. Uh, oh. And so we, we do have several customers who have started uh, integrating with Epicor, uh, even over the last few months uh, that started coming up more and more. 
So. Just to emphasize, the integration is not customization. We don't write macros or specific language because it's a trap down the road when each of the company may change revision, upgrade revision. This is done via API, application programming interface. And this is a layer that enable the, the customer to integrate with any third party software without hurting future version of any of those products. So this is an open API and this is industry standard. Okay, perfect. Here is the next one. Roberto is asking, how many users can be included in this module for approval, rejection, et cetera? As many as you want. Unlimited. <laughs> yeah. Unlimited. There is no limit on how many. Okay, here's another one. If I make a mistake, is there an undo or back button? There is undo. And Chris, I think I'm right. There is one undo button, uh, right? Yeah, so there's specific undo functions for certain tasks. Uh, depends on where you are in the product. Uh, some areas have undo, some not. Uh, it depends on what you're working on. Um, yeah, but, sometimes the two yeah. undo is very dangerous because you are part of a team, but <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag. So. Sure, makes sense. Okay, Pablo is asking, is PFMEA, excuse me, PFMEA and control plan linked where I could generate the control plan easily? Yes, so um, I didn't get quite that far through the step-by-step, -step, but um, the way that I showed how you can have, uh, you generate your PFLOW, and then from there, you're able to generate the PFMEA. Uh, the control plan is kind of the next step there that's based on the FMEA. And so they are linked. So if you update the FMEA and then you go to the control plan, it'll tell you, hey, you're not synchronized with the latest updates from the FMEA. Uh, do you want to sync that now? And so it gives you control uh, over when and how to sync. So yep, all that intelligence is built right in. Perfect. Okay. Carl is asking, we are a supplier in the defense supply chain and must send documents securely to and from customers and suppliers. Does this product help with that requirement? Are files able to be encrypted easily? The answer is yes, but I think uh, we have here Effie with us. So I think he can explore more on that. Are you with us, Effie? Or you are on mute? I think Effie is on Yeah, mute. I can. I am, I, I'm muted. Oh, okay. in the, uh, but we hardly hear you, Effie. Right, exactly. So I prefer Chris to answer. Oh, OK. OK, yeah. Fine. Okay, <laughs> I'll jump ahead. in. Um, so yeah, we, as I mentioned, there is a mode in which uh, if you're working with inspection manager on both sides of the equation, um, we can have end-to-end -end encrypted uh, transactions. And they can even be encrypted via um, either your own uh, um, SSL certs, as well as um, you, you can have, i um, forgetting the terminology right now, but like um, specific uh, security certificates uh, for uh, government level uh, security certifications um, and international uh, transactions and such. So you can have your personal certs kind of on each end of the equation that allow for that end-to-end -end encryption. You have to have the right cert in order to be able to uh, decrypt uh, the information being sent over. So uh, that's roughly how it works. It's not my um, uh, specialty, but that's kind of the big picture of how that works. Okay, let's take the next question. Is this software just working with drawings in PDF files or is it accepting SolidWorks slash AutoCAD versions? We are getting PDF files and any type of 2D print, even JPEG or TIFF, if you will. Um, but when we are talking about SolidWorks or AutoCAD drawings in the drawing, uh, in, the, in the AutoCAD format, uh, we don't get it as a 2D. Uh, generally speaking, there is no reason to do it from you know, our perspective or the industry perspective because we don't get anything back to AutoCAD or SolidWorks in terms of quality processes. So we would like to keep it as a standard. So in any given CAD system, 
you save it as PDF because every system enables it to save it as PDF and then we're going to get it. It doesn't matter what CAD system you're using. You could also output through 3D models in the native. No, 3D model for yeah. sure. I'm talking yep. about 2D. Yep, uh, <coughs> just, in case, just in case they were asking about 3D. Yeah, I wasn't sure. 3D, any native 3D, you name it, we get it, including those in the in, even intermediate like step 242 or JT, which we don't like because it, it's an intermediate translator, but we also support them. Okay, great. Here is another question. Dale is asking, how large does an organization need to be before they can expect an ROI? And how long does an ROI typically take? Okay. <laughs> like this question. Inspection manager is a quality management system. And I mentioned again in my early um, slides that we have a solution for small job shop, can be five people up to extremely large enterprises, thousands of employees. Now, when we talk about ROI, even you are going to implement the whole quality management system as a small organization, you're gonna do it in steps or stages. Even this medical company that I mentioned, we do integration with SAP, started with what we call the inspection manager, which is the internal quality management process without the, AP, the PQP and without the supply chain. So we're talking about this part of uh, uh, inspection manager. We can share with you a couple of our customers ROI analysis, but it vary between eight weeks to 12 weeks. That's the ROI. Thinking about taking print all the way and make it manually for a couple of good hours and creating the FAI with a couple of hours, sometimes days, and you do it in minutes, ROI is very quick. Yeah, there's... Go, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's some intangibles too there that are really interesting that we're starting to see is um, there's lots of smaller or mid-sized companies that can't even bid on certain types of work because the submission requirements are just too comprehensive for them to handle. So like there's a lot of companies that avoid bidding on work that requires FMEAs or requires SBC reporting and gauge r, &R because they don't have the tools or the systems to be able to even support that, that depth of documentation and reporting. And so having a integrated system like this where that's much more seamless and requires much less manpower makes it possible for smaller companies to be able to bid on projects that they might have turned down or looked the other way from uh, previously. So when you're talking ROI, it's not just on your current work, but it's also what doors and new opportunities does a system like this open you up to? And, and I can add another layer of, of uh, <laughs> complexity, if you will, or benefit from the other perspective. Because when you would like to, to bid on, 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 on certain project and you need, for instance, SPC, so what are you going to do today? You're going to buy an SPC package. And if you need another comp uh, capabilities, then you get another package. And you need to develop different expertise within your organization. And in here, you just added module and it just add on and, and, and intuitively integrates with the process. So the ROI is really highly expedited. Great. Here is another question. We're just about out of time. So we'll, we'll move things along here. Um, Tim is asking, what is the licensing schema uh, named licenses by user, active seats or something else? License, well, quickly here, we have four base packages that serves job shop, factory, factory pro enterprises. Those packages having almost the full functionality and every package added another layer of, of capabilities. The job shop, for instance, does not need at this stage, but when they scale up, they can add modules or they can you know, scale up to the next package with full credited on whatever purchased before. Now, first of all, we are centralized database. So if you have a job shop, you have one standalone, then it comes with the database, of course, on standalone machine. When you go up to factory and above, then it's centralized database, either our database or your SQL database. And then you can have standalone license or floating license. You can add license as you need, either lock, node lock or floating. 
the flexibility is almost endless. The idea here is that you grow as you need. And the idea here that you grow as you need, but there is no penalty when you scale up or adding more licenses or going to the next package. All the customers are credited whatever they purchase when they go to the next level. Okay, great. Well, we will conclude with this one last question. How long will it take to implement PQP? Think, Out of the, uh, oh, go uh, ahead. Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's really up to the customer because um, it's, uh, so it, which is you, the person asking the question, I guess. Uh, so it depends on the types of reports that you have, the how, how deep you want to go with the workflows um, and so on. So we really help guide you through the process and consult with you to, and any customer that we bring on board, we go through phases as we discussed earlier. Uh, so you kind of set your goal of like, where do you ultimately want to be with the system? And what are the achievable steps along the way to get there? So how far can we get within say a month or two to get up and running with some of the bare essentials? And what are the logical phases after that um, to continuously grow and improve? So um, uh, it, it, it's something where we can dumb down the system to a point that's very easy to put in place quickly in a few weeks. Uh, and then and when I say a few, I mean like two or three that you can be ballooning prints, building your inspection plans and automating that side of the process. Then you start dealing with the CMM data collection and such and the, all the reporting and everything we kind of run in tandem with that to make sure you have the reports that meet your needs at that stage of sophistication with the data collection process. Uh, Lisa, we can we can stay a couple of minutes more if there are questions, but just to emphasize what Chris just said from real customers that he's implementing now the PQP. When we started and, and shared with him what we have, and he said, I don't need all my forms that I build with Excel, million forms said, because you have the AIG forms out of the box, that's become my standard and I don't need any new forms anymore. I don't need any customization. I'm perfectly okay with it. That's of course, shorten the time of implementation. But again, as uh, Chris mentioned, we will have to discuss which is of the customers about the requirement. It might be that AIG forms are sufficient. They don't need any more or they need other type of forms to be customized. Excellent. Well, thank you again, Sam and Chris, for sharing your knowledge on PQP. Um, thank you to the audience for joining us and spending the hour with us. We hope you found it valuable. If you have any questions that come to mind, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Uh, Chris, if you want to advance the slide, we will, we will put up our contact information. And again, we are here and available to help you. Um, I am also sending out the recording shortly in the next couple of days in case you want to rewatch anything or share it with your colleagues. colleagues. Um, and thank you again so much. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.